you can go ahead and open to John chapter 15 and verse 24. If you don't have a Bible in front of you, you can just go to hungrygen.com slash notes and the notes for this message are there. hungrygen.com slash notes. Gospel of John chapter 12 verse 24. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. As we celebrated Jesus' death just a few days ago, and watch carefully, I used the word celebrate his death. When a funeral happens on the earth, we celebrate someone's life. But Jesus' death is the only death that is celebrated. Because in his death, there was victory. In his death, there was a defeat of sin, defeat of Satan, defeat of curse, and defeat of the devil. And the Bible says in here is when the time came and people came to Jesus and they wanted to see Jesus and Jesus begins to describe his death. He uses the analogy of a seed, a grain seed, a seed, a, a, a grain seed. The Bible says in here, when a grain of wheat falls into the ground, he begins to use the analogy of a grain of wheat as his life. Jesus is like this grain of weed. A grain of weed is very small. It's very tiny. Jesus, the same way when he came on this earth, he had a very humble beginnings. He was born in a manger. He was born to very simple parents. He never wrote a book, never started a country, and never traveled more than 200 miles. He lived a very humble, a very small life. And as this grain of seed, the Bible says in here, unless it falls into the ground and dies. What God the Father did 2,000 years ago is He took the, this grain, small grain of weed and He planted it into the soil of human race. The humanity is this dirt full of sin, full of weaknesses, full of problems, full of hurt, full of pain, full of demonic oppression, full of demonic possession, full of just the sorrows, full of bad habits. It, it's dirty, it's dark, it's cold, it's messy and God the Father takes this seed, Jesus Christ and He, he throws Him into the dirt of humanity. But see, God is not just throwing Jesus out. He is not just abandoning Jesus. He is strategic and He invests Jesus into humanity. He throws Him into the dirt of human suffering, human pain. And not only He goes into this dirt, but Jesus fell. Jesus was sent from heaven. And this dirt is dirty. This dirt is dark. This dirt gets trampled by man. The Bible says this seed when it goes into the ground. You know a few days ago I was sowing a little bit of grass seeds in my in my lawn and and I went and I stomped on it so that it can go deeper into the dirt. The same thing happened with Christ. This small seed, very humble beginning. He didn't do anything super great that other generals even did on the earth. He was born full human and full God. And God, if I could use that word, threw him into the earth. He was planted into the soil of humanity. And there he was surrounded by darkness. On the cross he was surrounded by human sin that was placed on him. And the Bible says that he was trampled by men, betrayed by his close friend, forsaken by his disciples, falsely accused by the people he came to save. People who could justify him washed their hands and said we want to do nothing with him. And this seed went through the turmoil, went through the heartbreak, went through suffering of rejection, betrayal and abandonment. And Jesus is describing his crucifixion in this short little parable. He says as the seed was thrown into the ground and Jesus the same way he was rejected he was trampled surrounded by rejection sin suffering betrayal of friends the Bible says and this seed it dies 
Jesus not only suffered, not only he was forsaken, not only he was abandoned by those close to him, but the Bible says after hanging for about six hours on the cross from 9 a.m. to 3 afternoon, after that he died. He didn't go into a coma, he actually died. When they broke the legs of other criminals, Roman centurion came to Jesus and instead of breaking his legs, he took a spear and he pierced his side and the Bible says that water and blood came out. Jesus was already dead. And then they took him down and as the seed that gets pushed deeper into the ground, Jesus Christ was buried. And three days later, the scripture says, he rose again. On Sunday morning, he rose again because as the seed that goes into the ground, as the seed that gets trampled by man, as the seed that gets surrounded by darkness and dirt, as the seed it leaves the hand of a farmer and it falls down. It doesn't rise, it falls down and then it, it gets deeper into the dirt and then it dies there. It begins to come out from the ground without the help of legs, without the help of arms, without any weaponry, without the help of a farmer, the seed breaks through the ground and most of us have seen it in our yard, we've seen it in our driveway. When a small little seed finds a crack in the asphalt, it finds a crack in the concrete and begins to come out of it and we cut it and it keeps coming back a few weeks later. That's exactly what happened to Jesus. Three days later, the devil put a stone around the, the grave and said, he ain't coming out of this. The soldiers were placed there. There was a seal that was placed there so that he will not come out. So nobody will not be able to break him in. And then Jesus rose again. The reason why angels removed the stone is not so Jesus can get out. It's so that we can all see he's no longer there. Jesus did not need to remove the stone to get out. He was already out. <laughs> the stone was removed so that we can see he has risen. As we celebrate today his resurrection, I want to remind you that what he did on the cross had to happen for us to experience the harvest of salvation. His death became our salvation. His suffering became our hope. His burial is what we identify with. It became our assurance that our sins are washed away, that we have hope we have future and when we die we are not going to just disappear and vanish into the thin air we're not going to go into some spiritual coma but we will go to be with Jesus we will go to be with God Jesus became the bridge between the humanity and divinity between us and heaven but what I love this verse for is not only that Jesus described his death in a very agricultural way he gave this good analogy of how his death would look like but I want you to see in verse 25. In verse 24 he describes his death, his burial, his resurrection. He describes what's going to happen that it will produce much grain meaning his death will produce much hope. It will produce healing, it will produce salvation, forgiveness of sins, drug addicts will find their hope, religious people will find their freedom, people that are bound by demons will find their liberty. People who are sick will find their physical healing. People who are depressed will find hope. It will produce much grain. But in verse 25, he says, He who loves his life will lose it. He who hates his life in this world will keep it for the eternal one. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. It's almost like Jesus is going from this is what's going to happen to me. I'm going to be like a grain, small. At first seem like I am being rejected by my father who throws me down but in reality he is sowing me. I will be surrounded by dirt and darkness. I will be trampled by men deeper into the abyss of humanity but I will rise again. At first it seems like Jesus is describing his suffering, his burial, his resurrection. But then in verse 25, Jesus begins to talk about your suffering. He begins to talk about my cross. He begins to give us an example 
that as a master he died for my sin but at the same time as he is dying for my sin and he's rising again he's giving me an example of what I will be going through and how I should go through it Jesus is not just our master Jesus is also our model he's also our example that's why the Bible says imitate Christ that's why he says in Matthew 11 he says come to me and I will give you rest and then he says learn from me because Jesus' death, Jesus' suffering and Jesus' resurrection is not just one time event that happened to him for our redemption it's also an example of how we should go through our suffering as well. Now it's true our suffering doesn't add salvation our suffering doesn't bring us redemption we don't suffer as a perfect lamb we suffer to be perfected to be like the lamb we suffer to be sanctified he suffered that we will be saved we suffer so we can also have fellowship and see the same fruits in our life as he had in his Maybe you feel like a grain, very small and insignificant. You were born maybe on the wrong side of the tracks. Maybe you feel like there's nothing really going in your life that's special. Maybe you feel that you add no value to the world that you're around. Maybe you feel like, man, but I have great dreams, but I look at my current situation and I don't see anything significant. I don't see anything valuable. I want to encourage you today that God has a plan and a purpose for your life but the process through which God will take you is going to be very painful. The promise is very beautiful. Promise is so awesome. It's the process that is very painful. We don't like the process. We love the promise. We want to become a forest. We just don't like the dirt, the darkness and dying in it and then coming back to life but sometimes that is the process that it takes. I want to just encourage you this Resurrection Sunday with few simple thoughts and how to go through the process as Savior did. If you are writing notes I want you to write this down. Trust in God's plan when it feels like your life is a part of the devil's plot. Trust in God's plan when it feels like your life is right now running on the tracks of the devil's plot. I mean think about it. Look at Jesus. Look at the seed being thrown from the hand of a farmer. It looks like from the perspective of a seed it looks like I'm being betrayed. I'm being abandoned. Why am I leaving the bag with the rest of the seeds? I enjoy the comfort of the rest of the grain seeds and now this mean farmer is throwing me out from the comfort of the community and he's not throwing me up, he's throwing me down. From the vintage point of the seed, this seems like a plot, conspiracy to destroy me. And on the top of the, that, what is, what is he throwing me? He throws me into the dirt. He throws me into the darkness. And on the top of that, mean people walk over me, stump me, and they push me down. It seems like, God, why are you doing this to me? Even Jesus prayed that prayer on the cross. He said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Because from the point of a seed, it looks like a plot of the enemy. But from the plan of the farmer, it looks very different. Never trust your perspective when you're suffering because your perspective is always deceptive. Your perspective has always the filter of pain and it feels like you're being abandoned, thrown down. Where is God in all of this? Never trust your perspective when you're in pain. Trust God's plan. When it feels like all of this is the plot of the devil, sometimes when it feels like a plot, it's actually a plan of God that's behind the scenes that God is in control. God is sovereign. God is faithful. And Jesus knew going into suffering that it will feel like a plot of the enemy. But in reality, it has a plan of God. Don't trust your feelings when you're suffering. Trust the farmer. Remember you're a seed in the hand of a farmer. 
and your farmer is Jesus Christ your farmer is God the Father you are not just aimlessly being thrown by life there is a God and the Bible says we are in his hand so when I am suffering, when I'm going through the cross, when I'm going through the Gethsemane, when I'm going through rejection, when I'm going through isolation, when things are being stripped away from me, I must understand just because it feels like a plot of the devil to destroy me. I don't trust my feelings. I trust my farmer. I trust his plan. I trust his promise. I trust his peace. I trust His presence. From the point of a seed, it looks like betrayal. But from the point of a farmer, this is the only way to produce a forest. Your vintage point, your perspective will never be accurate if you have it from the point of your pain. But when you see a breakthrough, when you see an answer from God, when you stand on Sunday morning, Friday night makes sense. When you stand on Sunday morning and you see the resurrection, cross makes sense. But when you are being whipped, scorched, betrayed and spit on, it feels like a plot of the devil. It feels like your life is spinning out of control. Yes, it is spinning. You're spinning down and down and down but you must understand it's the farmer that released you. The enemy is not in control in your life. God is. Even if you lost control, even if it feels like everybody is controlling your life, I want to tell you something. If you're a child of God, it doesn't matter how big or small you are, there is a God. He is in control and your life belongs to Him. Even if it spirals down, it belongs to Him. You are a seed and you have to trust a farmer. Even if you cannot trust your feelings, even if you don't see the future, even if the devil paints in your mind and says your future is a funeral. You have to say, devil, my future is a forest. My future is a farm, not a funeral. Jesus had a perspective that helped him to go through the cross. Trust in God's plan, not in your perspective. Trust in the farmer, not in your feelings. Trust in faith not in your fear what looks like burial sometimes is farmer planting a forest they both look alike from a point of a seed but from a point of a farmer one is producing a harvest the other one is simply hiding a corpse and it's important to find our faith I have been in situations in my life, even in some situations right now where certain things, they just don't make sense. Certain things, the perspective messes up with my reality. The sight lies to me. What I see, what I feel and how things look is so convincing and it doesn't line up with the plan of God. And I've learned one thing, when my perspective feels like my life is spinning out of control when what I see looks like I'm being abandoned I must understand I have to trust in Him not in what I see I have to trust in Him not in what I feel I have to trust in Him not in how I can explain and translate things in my mind because not everything that I see is the truth and the reality Jesus wasn't being abandoned on the cross he was being planted. He wasn't being buried. He was simply being planted. A lot of people abandon God because they're attached to their perspective. They're attached to what they see, what they feel. And we have to trust someone bigger than our feelings and our sight. I want to share with you a second thought from this. Prophetic insight gives us positive outlook on life. When Jesus talked about his suffering before he suffered, he always included resurrection. When he, he didn't shy away from how much pain he's going to have to endure. The moment disciples 
came to the real revelation that he is the son of God he did not spare any details from how gruesome painful and gory his death is going to be he would describe the rejection he would describe the betrayal but he never finished his description with the cross he always would finish with this statement and I will rise three days later even in here they're glorifying him these people came Greeks came asking for Jesus and Jesus switches the whole thing he says yeah yeah, yeah I know everybody right now is following me but you have to understand I'm gonna be like a grain seed thrown down in the dirt in the darkness and he doesn't finish with the dirt and the darkness he always finished it with his resurrection Jesus trusted the prophetic insight by prophet David who said you will not leave my soul in the grave he trusted in the prophetic plan from God the Father for his life that even looking at his suffering he always had positive outlook through that suffering Jesus was not a pessimist knowing what he's going to go through he always finished that thing saying I will rise again Jesus is a faith man Jesus is a positive man. Jesus is an optimist. It oozed out of him. It came out of his language. It came out out of his tongue. It came out out of his speech. True model Jesus left us is this. If I'm going through something, I must understand. I have to have a prophetic insight into my future to know that when it's dark, when it's uncertain, when it's scary, the words God has given to me through the prophet so and so, so and so, so and so, so and so. And if you did not get any prophetic words, come to Hungry Generation you will get a lot of prophetic words but let's just say you go to a church where you did not get prophetic words you have the best prophetic word it's called the Bible. Prophet Jeremiah can give you a prophetic word in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 there is other prophets that can give you other words and when you have a prophetic insight into the future you can look into the darkness without seeing the light and you can have a positive outlook why because prophetic insight gives you a positive outlook prophetic insight helps you not to be a pessimist when things are bad when things are dead when things are not turning around when things are getting worse you have to be like Jesus I will rise again I will smile again. I will love again. I will prosper again. I will walk again. I will hear again. I will see again. I will marry again. I will restart my business again. My ministry will grow again. You have to have the Spirit of Christ. Yes, I will suffer. Yes, it will hurt. Yes, it will be difficult. But I have a prophetic insight through the thick darkness I will rise again. There will be Sunday morning and I will rise on Sunday morning. My family will rise again. My mom and dad will serve God. My brother and sister will serve God. My children will be healthy. My children will serve God. I will rise again. Oh it might not be today. It might not be tomorrow but on the third day I will rise. This encourages me because see prophecy helps me to see the future. If I don't have a prophetic word, I will see a funeral. I will see that it will end. I will see that I'm, it, it's over for me. But having a prophetic word, I look beyond the betrayal, beyond my feelings, beyond all of what I'm feeling, my mood, and I declare with Christ, I'll rise again. I'll breathe again. I'll walk again. I will serve again. I will work again. I will preach again. I will write again. I will live again. Prophetic insight is so important. Jesus was not a pessimist naysayer. Jesus was not a pitiful suffering Messiah. He was a powerful suffering Messiah. When he suffered, he told his friends things will be hard. But he always told them, I'm coming back. Like a palm tree that goes through the storm and it gets bent, it rises back up. Jesus always told his followers, we're coming back. I'm coming back. I will lose all my followers. 
I will lose the crowd. Pharisees will destroy my reputation. But on the third day, I will rise again. And we will not just have a small following. We will have a movement. The world will not be able to stop. That's Jesus' optimistic view of his future. What do you see about your future? I see thousands locally and millions globally. When I look at even right now this sanctuary, it's empty with an exception of about few people that are in this room. But I see a large auditorium of people that are coming. The largest conference that we had at the, at the track center with over 3,000 people that showed up. I see that every single Sunday coming to our church for just one service. I see that our conference services, they will be held at the largest stadiums and I see hundreds of people coming to know Jesus every single weekend. I see the testimonies we get now of just few healings that happen every single day. We're going to see hundreds of them every single week. We have to look through the cross. We have to see the crown. We have to look through the cross and we have to see the calling. We have to look through the cross and we have to see our cause. We have to look through all of this and we have to have a prophetic picture. We will rise again. If you lost your marriage to divorce, you have to look through that and see that you will rise again. If you've been betrayed, abused and taken advantage of, you have to look through that and you have to have a prophetic insight into your future. The dream that you had as a child, that dream is not postponed. Keep that in front of you. The vision God has given you, keep that in front of you because prophetic insight is not given. God is not playing games with you by stirring up feelings within you of hope only to squash them with reality. God is giving you a prophetic insight the way He gave to Jesus. And Jesus, in the middle of everything, had a positive outlook. And Jesus is my example. Jesus is also your example. You may say, but Vlad, the prophet that gave me the, the word, I'm not sure I, I trust him fully. You know what Jesus could have easily said? Prophet David? Did you know the prophet David was actually not a prophet, he was a king. This guy didn't do prophecy for living. He wrote songs for living. And the time that he didn't write songs, he went killing people. And the time he wasn't killing people, he was committing adultery. It would have been a good excuse for Jesus to say, I can't trust my future into prophet David. He's not even a prophet. See some of us receive words from some people and you're like, that's not even, they're not a, like a real legitimate prophet. Just because their first name on YouTube doesn't start with prophet, it doesn't mean God cannot give you a prophetic insight into your future through somebody that He has called into your life. Take that word and believe it. It's going to be like Mary said, as God said. Not as I see it, not as I feel it, not as my circumstances look like, but as God said it. Can somebody say amen? And lastly, I want you to understand, I believe this is the most important secret of Jesus. Trust in God's plan when it feels like all of your life is a part of a plot to destroy you. I want you to also understand, you have to have a prophetic insight into your future. If you don't have a prophetic insight into your future, you will become a pessimist and you will destroy with your mouth the suffering, you will become pitiful in your suffering instead of powerful. You won't be purified through your suffering. You will be destroyed through your suffering because you lost hope. You will be so focused on what you're going through that you're going to forget where you're going to. You're going to forget your dream because of that nightmare surrounding you. Jesus did not do that. If you think Jesus was walking around talking about how bad suffering will be, He did. But He always ended with, I will rise again. The last thing I want to share with you is that I believe this to me has become a very important secret from the sufferings of Jesus. In Hebrews 9 verses 14 it says the following, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God. I used to appreciate the braveness of Jesus to get through the cross. The suffering he was able to endure. But the verse in Hebrew 9.14 has gave me a little insight into the secret of Jesus' strength. We know Jesus was born by the Spirit. He was filled by the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit. He was empowered by the Spirit. But I want you to see this. Jesus offered Himself through the Holy Spirit on the cross. Jesus did not get through the cross through self-discipline. 
he did not get through the cross through the mere willpower Holy Spirit gave him the strength to get through the cross why is that important because the Spirit of God that helped him through the cross was the same Spirit that raised him on Sunday morning Bible says is that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of you Jesus did not get through suffering because he was strong it's because his strength was the Holy Spirit he didn't just rely on the Holy Spirit to heal the sick he didn't rely on the Holy Spirit only to move in power he relied on the Holy Spirit to get through suffering and as the Spirit helped him to get through suffering the Holy Spirit raised him up on the third day what does that mean if you're taking notes I want you to write this down follow the comforter when all comforts fail follow the comforter when all comforts fail no wonder why the Lord said do not love life but follow me and love me why because when you go through the cross your comforts will fail you we all have comforts in our life in three things places we are in possessions we have and people that like us one thing cross does is it strips all three P's out of your life because when you go through the cross the comforts are stripped away from you and the people who don't know the Holy Spirit their life falls apart because their whole life is around the comforts that they have their dream is to make sure their life is comfortable but Jesus teaches us one lesson if you want to get through the cross and get to the crown you have to have a loose relationship with your comforts and attachment to the comforter you have to understand there will be a moment you won't have a house you might not have a car you might not have the reputation that you have but Jesus says the same way I went through what I lost everything I worked for for three and a half years it slipped through me the comforts faded away but my comfort of the Holy Spirit he never left me and because he never left me he helped me through the cross and the same comforter he resurrected my body and he gave me new comforts because he gave me a crown he gave me a new body he gave me a new level of life he raised me up comfort brings happiness but comforter brings joy only people who follow comfort are those who forgot they have a comforter don't follow comfort follow the comforter comforter doesn't keep us in comfort and comforter will never leave us on the cross a few days ago actually about a week ago there was one thing I got convicted by the Holy Spirit in uh, to do which led my life mine and my wife's life made it very uncomfortable the very thought of it made me sick when I finally did what I was supposed to do that I felt like I needed to do I felt stripped from the comfort that I lost in the process of following the Holy Spirit and honestly it made me feel grieving and as I was praying about it I felt the Holy Spirit says, He says, you will never be able to be close to me if you're addicted to comfort. He says, the only people I give myself to are those who love me, the comforter, not the comfort. And He says, the reason why I am the comforter is because when I come into your life, you can be sure of one thing. In order for you to go to the next level, you're going to have to give up the comfort of this one. I cannot give you the crown until you let go of the comfort of this season but if you are addicted attached and in love with me and you lose the comfort of life you will still have my comfort because I am your comforter and I will raise you up on a third day and you will experience new level of comfort but don't get attached to that because if you stick close to me even that comfort one day will be given up because I'll take you somewhere else 
my friend I want to encourage you Jesus was not addicted to the reputation he was not addicted to crowds he was not addicted to what people thought of him Jesus was in touch with the Holy Spirit and when everything left him the Spirit of God was still there and the same Spirit is still with you and the same Spirit is still with you if you don't have a comfort of your job you have a comforter in your house if you don't have a comfort right now of somebody loving you having a boyfriend or having a husband you have a comforter his name is the Holy Spirit if you don't have the comfort of your savings account you have the comforter the Holy Spirit if you don't have the comfort right now of this and that you have the comforter the Holy Spirit if you let the Holy Spirit lead you through the cross he will never bury you after the cross he will raise you up yes the sign of Christianity is the cross but the foundation of Christianity is the empty grave the cross is the sign but it's the empty grave that's the power of Christianity every a lot of people were crucified only one rose from the dead after the crucifixion when I follow the comforter it's not only I go through suffering I get to the victory you get to victory you get to breakthrough in Jesus name and my master died for my sin while dying for my sin he became the model of how to go through suffering he teaches me not to trust my perspective by trust in God's plan he teaches me never lose prophetic insight into your future even though when life is painful and he teaches me never be addicted to comfort in life when they come enjoy them when they leave hold on to the comforter of your soul the Holy Spirit he will never leave you he will never abandon you and he's committed to your calling not to your comfort so don't be surprised if he will pluck all the feathers out of your nest because you were never created to live in a nest you were created to soar to run to walk and to fly and to live for his glory in Jesus name if you're watching us right now and maybe you have not made a decision to give your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Perhaps you don't know of this comforter. Your whole life is on this big chase to get more comfort. You're getting a degree so your life can be more comfortable. You're exercising so your life can be more comfortable. Everything that you're doing, your whole goal, your God, if I could say, is comfort. As a Christian, our God is the Holy Spirit is Jesus and this resurrection Sunday he died on a cross for you so that he can be your Savior he died on a cross for you so he can take away the penalty and the power of sin from your life he not only died for you but he left you an example of how to go through difficult things and the best part he sends you a mentor the comforter to help you through everything you're going through. Following Jesus doesn't make life easier, but it makes life better. And the Holy Spirit will be every step of the way with you. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, or maybe something happened along the way, and you lost that connection, and today you would like to recommit your life, give me the greatest pleasure of leading you to that relationship right now all you gotta do is place your trust in Jesus again repent of your sin I'm gonna lead you in prayer but make no mistake prayer doesn't save you Jesus saves you prayer is just an expression of a cry for relationship with God let's pray say Lord Jesus I'm a sinner please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your precious blood I believe you have died on a cross for someone like me I trust in you I repent of my sin come and live in me be my Savior and be my Lord Holy Spirit guide me in the way of life in Jesus name if you pray that prayer with me right now if you recommitted your life to Jesus or you prayed that prayer for the first time, could you let us know? 
we would like to actually connect with you today we would like to do a video chat with you to just connect with you go to hungrygen.com slash VIP fill out that card and our office will get hold of you today so that we can connect with you